Hello, my dear friends. Well, I'm glad that some of you are still with me. And uh, in today's video, I want to continue the main part uh, related to uh, the uh, short essay writing strategy. Um, as I have been told, uh, so it's in great demand because it teaches uh, students not only to write effectively, but to speak effectively as well. That's why it's called short writing. It's not a typical IELTS or TOEFL writing, uh, but um, it's rather uh, related to general English writing strategy. And that's why it's, it can be a good foundation for everybody who would like to take uh, either IELTS or TOEFL examination uh, afterwards. Well, and I've got a friend of mine. Uh, she used to be a student of mine. And uh, these days, uh, she, <clears throat> she teaches English in one of uh, Oriental countries. Uh, well, and she's got a lot of students of her own and uh, she partially uh, shares my uh, material with uh, her students. And she says that they like it and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, uh, but uh, there seems to be one problem. It is that they can hardly make out what I'm telling them because of uh, the microphone maybe it's out of order i'm sorry i will try to speak up so that you can make out what i'm telling you okay i've just used the expression make uh make out that means uh, to comprehend and not exactly to understand but comprehend there is a difference uh between the two words though they have something in common i mean to say that imagine that you are speaking to someone and the person is not speaking to you but whispering something into your ear and you can hardly understand what what it is and you say oh come on speak up please i can't make out what you're telling me or for example uh you want to read something written uh on board but uh, there is a great distance between you and the board and uh, in this case you can also use this phrase oh i can't make out what's written there well okay and uh, if you are ready let's get down to the class it is my favorite expression uh, get down to that means start doing something. Okay, I actually actually I like using phrasal verbs because um, uh, they are short but informative and they help to minimize the vocabulary uh, one needs uh, one needs to, to put forward to one's ideas. Again, I'm using this uh, phrasal verb put forward for example. That means uh, to explain something. So listen carefully to the way I speak English and try to pick up. You can see, pick up instead of select and try to pick up uh, some new expressions which you believe can make your speech uh, more, I would say, functional, but maybe better. Okay, so uh, for today's class, I have chosen another topic. You see, I'm using the present perfect tense. I have chosen, I, I said, I have chosen because uh, it's still important for me. Remember, whenever you want, whenever you can continue the idea saying it's still, this is the present perfect tense. I have chosen and I'm going to use it now. Now is the principal word uh, for understanding the nature of the present perfect tense. For example, the phrase, I bought a car and I still drive it. I still have it. I still own it. That's why I should say I have bought a car. Okay, it's grammar, and I'm very sure that your um, uh, English teachers, my uh, colleagues, will explain to you uh, this uh, tense better. Maybe I'm not sure, but anyway. So uh, the purpose of uh, our class today, today's class, is different. It's again uh, writing, and I have chosen another topic. It is quite problematic uh, because it deals with uh, education nowadays. Education, and I've got it uh, from. Uh, a textbook a current, uh, for Korean students uh, who want to become uh, uh, translators. And uh, this is, uh, here it is, also this, I will copy it into a new uh, Microsoft Word document. So copy, well, and uh, control N, yeah, the new, here it is. Uh, yeah. So describe the modern school student uh, of your country. A short essay. 
remember that <clears throat> the standard, um, I would say the average uh, short essay writing volume is about 150 words, 150 words. And before we uh, get down to writing, I just want to brush up on what you're supposed to show off when uh, doing that. Show off, by the way, it's another good expression. Show off, double F. Show off means to show yourself uh, from the best side, what you can do. And it is a positive uh, verb, by the way. It's okay to say, oh, right now I'm going to show off my skills uh, so that I, have, I set a chance to, to be offered a good position. It's okay to say show off. So um, the list of the grammatical structures uh, you're supposed to, uh, to show off uh, to the examiner. Uh, if you are at, the at elementary level, again, the present simple, the present continuous, partially the present perfect, the past simple, uh, the construction there is there are, the quantifiers uh, such as many, much, uh, few, little, a few, a little. Well, also the correct use of uh, the articles and a and the. Well, uh, the infinitive construction, for example, I'm glad to see you. Well, and the gerund construction as well, because we know that uh, some verbs and some constructions are usually followed by gerunds, not infinitives, though the translation is the same. Well, uh, these are the things you are supposed to show, include, incorporate into your writing, even at the elementary level. Yeah. Oh, these things should be done, of course, if you want to, uh, to stand a chance, to get a higher score. You see, I'm not saying have a chance, though you can say like this, but it is much better to say stand a chance because you must be different from others. You should stand out against others. 99% uh, of um, examination applicants would say have a chance, but you must be different from them. You must use something others either don't know or have forgotten in order to have some extra um, extra uh, ace up your sleeves, and it's another idiom that means to have some extra hidden positive moment uh, about your skills or, or related to your skills. Okay, well, uh, again, it's a very problematic, uh, unfortunately, I should admit that it is a, a, a very problematic issue, and uh, the main uh, cause of my writing uh, is not going to be rather positive, unfortunately. Well, um, so what I want uh, to write about is that I don't like uh, today's uh, uh, students. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like uh, the image of these um, students. Well, because um, how to say, they are very different from what rep representatives of my uh, age groups used to be when they went to school. And you know, looking at modern uh, school goers, I'm very glad that I'm much older than them. Believe me or not, but it's true. Well, I need to work out the, not only the strategy, but the contents of uh, what I'm going to write about. So the foundation of my writing is it's uh, not the not my favorite image, as I told you, uh, but I should somehow uh, make it better. Okay, let's start. Let's get started. Let us say, well, um, one sec. So uh, uh, there are many schools in my country. Well, it is rather standard uh, introduction. Well, uh, there is nothing um, very special about it, but still, I should somehow start it, right? Remember that um, uh, I'm trying to show kind of elementary writing. Well, uh, so there are many schools in my country. Okay, and uh, uh, many boys and girls, many 
uh, boys and girls. Uh, boys and girls. Okay, uh, go to school to study. Uh, they go there uh, six days a week. Yeah, if I remember rightly, six days a week. Okay, then Uh, then six days a week. Okay, what else can we write? So, um, mm -hmm. boys and girls have their classes. Boys and girls have their classes not because they want to study but because their parents want them to do it you see, in this sentence, I'm using the the uh, verb want, and it is a tricky verb because uh, many not experienced uh, uh, English speakers use it incorrectly, using uh, that after the verb want. For example, I want that you go there. It's impossible to say like this. We use the uh, the complex object construction. I want him to do something. It's okay, but I want that he do or will do or should do something it is absolutely wrong and please don't make such a mistake okay again my mom wants me to eat this apple it's okay but you can't say my mom wants that i eat the apple no that's rubbish that's bad english so okay let's come back to our sheep so boys and girls have their classes not because they want to study but because their parents want them to do it. Okay. Okay, and um, yeah, we can say why. Now we should explain why uh, it is like this. So they are lazy and they are not ready to work. They don't want to study. They don't want to study. We can add the word well. By this, we show the example that, uh, that we know what an uh, adverb is and the difference between an adjective and an adverb. Good is an adjective, but well is an adverb. Uh, nice is an adjective. Nicely, an adverb. Expensive, expensively. Okay, so they're lazy and they are not ready to work. They don't want to study well. Okay, okay. So um, they want to have good money. Yeah, we also can add the sentence. They want to have good money. By the way, just want to say about some words about the pronunciation of some words. Um, you may be surprised to hear some native speakers, as you believe, mispronouncing some words because you are accustomed to uh, hearing others say uh, a particular word this way, but other native speakers uh, pronounce it uh, another way. For example, when I found myself abroad for the first time, when I first found myself abroad, so I came across uh, some. Uh, some guys residing in the south of England, and you know what? I was shocked to uh, to hear them uh, speak English. For example, instead of the word money, they pronounce it as money. Instead of come, they said they would say come. Instead of Russia, they said Russia. Instead of bus, they said bus. Well, and uh, there were a lot of such situations uh, when I had to guess what exactly they meant to say. 
and the more which means that the more uh different dialects you hear to practice the better it is for you not to find yourself in a situation where you can't make out what some what when somebody is telling you something okay so they want to have good money it's a good idea by the way to have good money but it's not that easy to do right one thing is what you want but another thing how to do that okay so um uh okay yeah i guess that uh logically now i should describe uh, uh describe them not the appearance but maybe something which we can see or can't see about them uh for example i can i can write like this uh, and i believe it's true because i have seen it myself when uh, they go to school uh, they uh, have uh, we can write got only one thick copy book uh, where they a uh, copy book for all subjects for all subjects uh, for all subjects um, and uh, for all subjects for all subjects okay and where in the rucksacks yeah in their rucksacks i'm sorry rucksacks and uh, school and school bags um <clears throat> I, I understand perfectly well that uh it's very likely that somebody reading these lines will not like them well it's their right not to like or to like something it is my point of view and i do have the right to, to think this way others who disagree with me with my point of view uh, can or sh uh, can uh, not to take it uh seriously well it's also okay this is what is uh, known as pluralism plural uh is a latin word which, which means a lot of so pluralism means uh, when people have different uh, thoughts and they are not supposed to be the same this is what we call freedom uh thinking freedom uh okay so when they go to school they have got only one thick copy book uh, for all subjects in their rucksacks and school bags okay what else can we write um yeah we can also say uh, we can also uh write that uh there aren't any there aren't any uh textbooks uh textbooks uh with them why is it good to include this sentence into the writing because it contains the quantifier any we remember that in uh, negative or interrogative sentences interrogative means question sentences we use uh, any instead of some there aren't any textbooks with them it's clear that at school okay uh-huh okay now it's time to write something uh to write something uh about what they do at home because if they are school students they are supposed to do their homework but in fact they don't do that so let's include this idea as well after i'm oh sorry after school they come home and they don't uh, do their i'm oh sorry their homework you know i'm not that good at uh palming down palm you know the word palm p-a-l-m palm and palm down is a phrasal word which means type fast so i can't i'm not good at uh <clears throat> palming down some text okay so after school after school uh, so they come home and they don't do their homework so what else can we write mm -hmm. uh how but they like 
to go to school uh, because uh, there they have fun. They have fun. By the way, I would like to dwell at this um, phrase have fun because I have heard a lot of guys uh, making uh, mistakes uh, when using this phrase. Uh, remember that fun is uncomfortable. For that reason, we can't use uh, the indefinite article eh. We can't say, oh, have a fun, no. Have fun, yes. Have a fun, no. So but they, they like to go to school because they are, I'm sorry, they have fun. Uh, for example, for example, they play cards and it's true. They play cards on uh, computer games. Okay, uh, games uh, in their uh, phones, uh, text messages uh, to their friends, or what else can they do? Or what else? For example, they, uh, yeah, they listen to music or listen to music, listen to their favorite, that's right, their favorite uh, music. They don't listen, they don't uh, listen to their teachers when they explain something important, something important. Mm -hmm. I also would like to say a couple of words about the verb explain. It's not that easy as, as it may seem to be. Um, <clears throat> remember, you cannot say explain me. Remember that we, use, we always use the preposition to after the verb explain. Explain to me, explain something to me. Uh, just the same as we say, listen uh, to something and explain to somebody. Okay, they don't listen to their teachers uh, when they explain something important. Unfortunately, it's true. Okay. So, um, some of them, some of them go to their is also true, private teachers um, after their classes, after their classes, hmm. after their classes, okay, after their classes, what else can we write about it, okay. And let's add something uh, positive, at least in, in the end. I hope that not all of them are like this. I guess it's enough. Let's uh, see how many words um, make up uh, this way. Yeah, you see, 181. 181 words. Yeah, it's okay. It, it corresponds to uh, the definition of the writing, a short essay, 181. Well, let's take another look at this writing. First of all, it corresponds to the, uh, to the assignment, to the essay topic, describe the modern school student of your country. We don't name the name of the country, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, uh, we, and also, also, we should understand that it is um, elementary level, elementary uh, level. Oops, elementary level. And uh, let's underline the constructions here, which are, can be classified as uh, the must, uh, which should be shown off uh, by the by an elementary uh, uh, examination applicant. Uh, the construction they were, it's okay. Then uh, the quantifier many, yeah, it's okay. I'm sorry, come on, yeah. Then uh, go to school. 
the absence of the article here is also correct uh, because uh, we remember that there are some uh, uh, workflow locations where we don't uh, use any article and you must learn them by heart. Uh, one of them is this one, go to school or go to church or have uh, or make or cook uh, breakfast or um, dinner, supper, you name it. Well, um, to be in prison or to be in hospital, all these phrases, uh, all these phrases uh, are normally used without uh, any article uh, in some circumstances. If you're unsure about uh, that, uh, so turn to your uh, English language instructors so that they explain it to you once more. Another thing, the use of the article air, air week, six days air week. Usually uh, elementary students make this mistake saying six days in a week or uh, twice uh, in a month. Absolutely wrong because when we use the uh, preposition in, it means after for example when you say in a week it means after one week okay then we use uh, the conjunction uh, because it's a, a positive moment uh, the infinitive to study after the verb start uh, after the verb want it's okay and this is a very very important construction complex object want somebody to do something yeah it's a wonderful construction you must be able to use it when speaking when speaking english Okay, not ready to do what? Another infinitive, so it's a positive moment. Uh, well, it's the demonstration of the difference between adjectives and adverbs. It's another positive moment. Okay, okay, only have got, yeah. The use of got after the verb have in the present simple tense is a positive moment too, because unfortunately many not native uh, speakers who would like to pick up, uh, pick up English uh, don't use got and it's not a good thing to do because normally native speakers do they say oh i've got a car instead of saying i have a car so they uh, they are like likely to say i've got a car okay then uh, the vocabulary uh, use of the words rucksacks uh, so instead of just school bags it's a very good thing to do well come home it's the absence of the article is another good mo moment uh, showing the examiner that you know how to use uh, the articles correctly because in this collocation come home we never use uh, any article come home yes come uh, to or to to their home uh, incorrect <clears throat> the same is applicable to the construction uh, to the word collocation go home yankee go home wow politics no fuck pol politics Okay, uh, don't do the homework, but I'd like to go blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, have fun. It's another positive moment about the writing. The use of the living phrase, for example, it's a positive moment. Well, then uh, text. Oh, yes, it's another good vocabulary unit. I will explain to you uh, why, because usually not native speakers uh, prefer to use the verb write instead of text. However, native speakers would say text a message, not write a message. But if you say text, a uh, write a message, uh, they will understand you, but uh, somewhere deep inside they would think, oh my God, they, they, they don't know my language. Okay, then uh, something important, private teachers, I guess the word private is okay. Okay, so these are the positive moments about this writing, but this is, elementary level so let's uh, highlight it uh, with another color for example this one okay it's elementary level now um let's uh, uh, apply the same technique which we did uh in the previous uh, video lesson when i extended uh, the each uh, uh, sentence using extra grammatical uh, structures uh, super duper grammatical structures and a high vocabulary units but the idea should be the same it's not that easy to do well i want to say that uh in the beginning if you are not good at writing you can start writing at an elementary level but then you should uh, uh, take some time in order to work out a modified amended version of each of the sentences you have just written down 
and you will see that the final of your writing will be much, much better. And uh, you, you will see the results, positive results of your efforts. Okay, now let's uh, write down. Um, so let's say the elementary level, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, intermediate level. Intermediate level. Yeah, it's going to be much uh, more challenging. That's for sure. It's going to be much, much challenging because I will have to modify, amend all these things which I have written uh, in assignment two in the first uh, version. Believe me, it's not that easy to do. Okay. Well, before we start writing uh, the intermediate at the intermediate level, so just a few words about what we uh, wrote down here. Um, it is that. It is that. The sentences. are relatively easy in terms of structure, okay? And uh, what else? Mm, so relatively easy, uh, nearly no use of leading phrases and uh, connectors, um, leading phrases. Now we should somehow do something about that. Okay. Okay. How? Yeah, I have already written down uh, this one. Uh, I mean, the intermediate level, and uh, well, here it is. I just want to 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 show you uh, each sentence one by one with my comments. Okay. Um, Uh, that's the first one. First, I want to make the point that there are many schools in, in my country where thousands of boys and girls, aged from 7 to 17, learn different subjects, attending their classes six times per week. As you see, uh, in terms of sentence structure, this sentence is much more complicated than any other included into the first elementary level writing. Um, so let's see uh, which uh, elements it consists of. I want to make the point that it is a leading phrase. Uh, then there are many uh, schools in my country. It is the main idea, okay? The main idea of the sentence. It corresponds 100% with this one, okay? With this one. So, and after the conjunction where I give some extension, because you remember the golden writing style, it is that uh, as you have given something, some idea, you should give some extension in the next writing. So where uh, opens the, it opens the, uh, I'm say explanation, where thousands of boys and girls uh, the use of the word thousands uh, shows it's a uh, these words help me to um, collect enough number of words first of all and secondly uh, it should it is a good substitute uh, substitute for the word many thousands of boys and girls then aged the use of possible to construction it's a very nice thing to do from seven to seventeen learn different subjects instead of uh, here is C I wrote have, uh, yeah, the different uh, classes. And here I, said, I wrote learn different subjects. And again, my favorite, the possible one construction, doing what? Attending the classes six times per week. Instead of a week, I wrote per week. I guess it's uh, a much, much better sentence. What do you think? Well, uh, the next uh, sentence, let me copy uh, from my um my version here it is so
Yeah, it's not that easy to do, by the way. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Here it is. However, it's not the, uh, their own desire to learn something new and to pick up useful skills behind their going to school, but their parents. So this is the end of the sentence. Uh, this one. You see? First of all, it doesn't start immediately from the main point. I used uh, the leading phrase, however, okay? <clears throat> then, it's not their own desire to learn something new. Because if we compare this one, uh, we see uh, they don't want to study, but their parents uh, want them to do it. You see? The same idea, but it is expressed through other words. It's not their own desire. Instead of want to, I use the word desire to learn something new. And I added something extra to pick up useful skills. Uh, I don't uh, included this idea into the first writing, but I believe that it uh, it could be useful uh, to include into the intermediate level writing because to extend my writing to show the examiner that I can use such words. Uh, behind they are going to school. What is good about this one? I use the uh, gerund going. And why gerund? Even uh, the gerundial complex, they, uh, they are going, not just going. Because we've got the preposition behind. We remember that we, use, uh, we normally use gerunds after prepositions. Uh, I also, at this point, I don't forget uh, that it is an apostrophe. Whose desire? Parents' desire, not theirs. Okay, and here uh, is the next sentence. I'm going to say that uh, being lazy, they don't feel like working hard with their heads. Oh, let's take a look at the previous. They are lazy and they are not ready to work. Oh, you see? It's such a good paraphrase for this sentence. They are lazy and they are not ready to work. And this sentence is like this. First of all, it starts from the leading phrase I mean to say. Then I use the uh, first one construction, being lazy. They don't feel like. Feel like, it's a phrasal verb. Uh, it, it's very close uh, in, um, in lexical terms with the word want. But as you see, like is a preposition in this uh, construction. That's why it's followed by the gerund working. Hard with their heads. To work with their hands, it's uh, like a parabola when we use something to uh, describe in a not literal way, yeah? Uh, like pictures. Okay, uh, so let's see what I've got next. The next sentence here is, they want, uh, they don't want to start a will, they want to have uh, good money. Let's see what I have prepared uh, for uh, the next sentence. Uh, okay, hold a second, please. Uh, hold a second. Here it is. Um, but they want, but uh, what they want really, what what they really want is to earn good money, doing nearly nothing. Um, I would like you to understand the structure of this sentence well. If I ask you, where is the subject in sentence, most of you would say they. No, and it would be wrong because the subject in this sentence is, but what, I, uh, what they really want, this is the subject. Yes, uh, this is the subject because we can substitute uh, this part of the sentence with the word it. It is to earn good money, doing, not, doing nearly nothing. Grammatically, we can do that. And that means that uh, these words make up the subject in the sentence. So, but what they really want is to earn good money. And again, I'm using the past for one construction. It is favorite and usually native speakers uh, do that quite often. Oh, I just see the word often. 
yeah normally we say often but these days even native speakers uh, tend to use it uh tend to pronounce this word as often <clears throat> okay uh doing nearly nothing okay it would compare this to the original sentence here they don't want to start a well yeah they want to have good money then the next sentence when they go to school they have got only one thick copy book a copy book for all subjects in their rucksacks and uh, school bags let's see what i have prepared for uh this one uh hold on a sec please so yeah i guess it is a, a great sentence i like it myself <laughs> uh-huh okay mm. okay okay yeah it's not that easy to do that because it's time consuming well uh well here it is daily instead of every day daily when they are at school all they have got in their school bags you see i again i i use the construction have got all they have got in their school bags is again these uh, words make up one subject because uh, all these verbs can be uh, substituted with the word it it is a single notebook can we select this yes we can that means that all these words which make up the subject are the subject so all they have got in their school bags is a single notebook where they sporadically write down logically not linked fragments of their teachers lectures I hope that you understand uh, the point uh, made and expressed in this sentence. Well, uh, first of all, uh, we understand that uh, there are several parts in the sentence which are linked with each other with a uh, 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 connector where, and there is a, a nice word sporadically, which means now and then, not uh, steadily, not uh, on the constant, uh, a constant uh, platform maybe write down write down is another phrasal verb which means to jot down fast what you hear uh, logically it's not a good word it's an adverb first of all not linked possible uh to construction well fragments is not a good uh, is not a good vocabulary teachers lectures well um some of you may say, okay, when we analyze the, your sentences, we understand it, but when it comes to writing on our own, we can't do the same. Yeah, perhaps for the time being, you can't do it now, but if you try, if you give it a try, uh, and not sporadically, uh, but on a regular basis, I am pretty sure that you will be able to write even better than me. Uh, why better? I'll explain to you why, because uh, I've got uh, much work on my plate, which means I have a lot of uh, things to do. Uh, but at your age, you don't have uh, many responsibilities. And if you concentrate on your writing skills development, uh, you will uh, develop uh, your, uh, them so greatly that I will I will look pale in comparison with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean it. Uh, the Americans say, I mean business saying that, which means I'm not joking. Okay, so the next uh, sentence, they aren't, okay. Uh, so, but they like to go to school because uh, there they have fun. There they have fun. Let's see uh, what I have prepared. Uh, okay. Okay. So, yeah, another extended sentence. Um, I like it. You know, that shows that uh, the author of the writing has serious thinking, analytical skills. This is the way how. I'm sure of myself, but anyway. Um, see, moreover, uh, when they are back home, instead of getting down to their homework, they prefer hanging around with nothing to do. They can go out to, to play football 
or go to the cinema, anything, but not doing their homework. Again, I guess that you understand the main idea of the sentence, but let's analyze uh, uh, the structure, what I included into the sentence. First, first of all, it doesn't start with the, uh, immediately. It starts from the leading phrase, moreover. Moreover uh, is used when you want to give some extra ideas uh, then or support the, the, um, the point made previously in the previous sentence. So when they are back home, it's uh, another uh, time clause. Clause means a part of a sentence which isn't uh, the main. Instead of getting down to their homework, instead of it's a, a complex uh, preposition, and that's why we are supposed to use a gerund, and I'm doing this here in the sentence, uh, getting down to. So it's a gerund, it's a positive uh, a grammatical moment about the writing, but it's also a positive um, a thing in vocabulary terms because it uh, shows uh, the examiner that I know how to use correctly phrasal verbs. So uh, if I remember rightly at the beginning of the of this lesson, I used this phrase, uh, this phrase uh, telling you that it's meaning get down to means to start doing something. So so instead of uh, getting down to the homework, they prefer the word prefer is very nice because we normally use a, a gerund after it. Hanging around. Hang around, it's another phrase of verb, which means, well, be busy doing something, but not very important. Uh, hang around with nothing to do. And after the uh, colon symbol, I uh, write exactly what they do. They can go out to play football. I use the infinitive of purpose. To do what? They go, they go out for what? With uh, what uh, purpose? To play football or go to the cinema. We remember the use about the use of the article there. Anything but not doing their homework. Well, uh, anything in this case means how to say it uh, explained in English? Anything. Mm. Well, if I could speak, for example, Chinese or Uzbek or Tajik, but I can't, unfortunately. Okay, I guess you understand what it means. Anything means anything else, but not this thing. Well, uh, let's take a look at the next sentence. Uh, they play cards, games, and uh, in their phones, text messages to their friends, or listen to their favorite music. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, what is in my writing? Uh, Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, mm, take a look, please. Uh, to worsen the situation, they seem to have only one motivation to be present in the class. It is having a ball, <laughs> having a ball by playing cards collecting and spreading rumors about their friends, private lives, etc. Well, um, again, this sentence starts from the leading phrase to worsen the situation. It's a standard one. You should uh, use it uh, uh, more often when uh, doing your writing. They seem to, seem to, uh, it's a very nice expression and uh, it's a structure which is known as the complex subject structure. When you are, you aren't sure, uh, but nearly sure, you use this phrase. Uh, it seems to me that, or um, yeah, okay. So they seem to have only one motivation. Motivation is a very a vocabulary uh, word choice. To be present, a very nice one as well. It's having a ball. Yeah, it's an idiom. So have a ball means have fun. Absolutely. Have a ball is the phrase which is which I often heard. Uh, uh, when I was abroad, uh, native speakers uh, use it uh, very often. I guess uh, their whole lives are, are like uh, having a ball for them. By doing what? By playing cards. So you see, I'm using a gerund here because uh, this word is followed uh, after the preposition by. Uh, so by playing cards, collecting and spreading, ru spreading rumors. This is something which isn't mentioned here. Uh, but still, I believe that uh, this uh, extension uh, can be interesting uh, in order to attract the examiner's attention to my writing. 
remember that the more uh, detail uh, you give, uh, you add to your writing, the more, more interesting, captivating it becomes. Spreading rumors about their friends' uh, private life. By the way, it's not applicable only to females. Males also like uh, spreading rumors. Oh gosh. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, okay. They don't listen to their teachers when they explain something important. Okay, let's take a look at what I've got uh, in my next writing. Uh-huh, yes, yeah, I like it. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I believe that if you follow, uh, follow suit, if you follow uh, my uh, words of advice, um, you will be able to write not worse than me. I'm sure about that. Um, how is that face? Yeah. So take a look uh, at my next writing. So this is, uh, they stay indifferent to what their instructors are trying to teach them. Nevertheless, they realize perfectly well, uh -huh, until this, uh, until this uh, point, please. They stay indifferent to what their instructors trying to teach them. Indifferent means they pay no attention. They don't care two pins about that. Oh, I'll just use an idiom. Uh, I don't care two pins, P-I-N-S. I don't care two pins about something. So that means I don't care. So they stay indifferent to what their instructors, instead of the word teachers, I use the word instructors, just, just to show that I'm, can pick up some other words. Again, I'm using the part one construction, trying. So the instructions, instructors doing what? Trying to teach them. So the next, uh, uh, the next, uh, they don't listen to their teachers when they explain something for them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And this is the uh, extension, the continuation. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, some of them go to their private teachers after their classes. Okay, let's take a look at my version. Uh, I mean, extended version of mine. Um, nevertheless, wow, it's a very good uh, living phrase. They realize perfectly well. Realize perfectly well. It's a very nice expression. I like it. I often use it in my writing. That unless they pick up some knowledge, instead of learn something, I use the phrase word pick up some knowledge. And also I use this word unless, which means if not, unless they pick up some knowledge, they won't be able to. I'm using the uh, uh, modal verb can equivalent to be able to, uh, because it refers to the future and that's why we use uh, it, uh, but not can. We can't say will can, it's uh, awful. They won't be able to do what? To get into university. Get into means to enter university. And this is the uh, phrase of equivalent, which, is got, which has got the same meaning. By the way, never say enter to or enter in, never. Enter somewhere to get into university. That's why when the classes are over, they stream out to their private teachers. You see, I use this phrase stream out uh, just to show the examiner that I can use um, English words uh, not only according to their first meanings but also uh, as an effective English writer because uh, when a lot of people uh, come out of a particular building it uh, from a side it seems like uh, like a stream or like a small river um, and the people coming out make up the river. That's why I use the word stream. So, but as a verb, they stream out to their private teachers where, and this is the extension, where they appear to be pie boys and girls. Pie means very good, the best. Um, so where they appear to be pie boys and girls, appear. It's the complex subject construction just the same as seem to or appear to, they're identical. Where they appear to be pie boys and girls. Appear to means that actually they are not like this. 
it only seems to be like this, but in reality, they aren't like this. Pi boys and girls means that their behavior is uh, very nice. They look very nice. They behave nicely. Uh, they speak using uh, no bad words, etc. Uh, okay. Frankly speaking, I, I would like to use some Ukrainian words and expressions uh, because there are some which are very, very uh, effective in this particular context, but I'd better not. I'd better not. Okay, so we're coming to the end. Well, some of them go probably, okay. I hope that uh, not all of them are like this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look uh, at the ending of my version. Uh, yeah, last one. Uh, hold a sec, please. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I've just featured, I've just featured the average local pupil, the way I see them. And as you may have noticed, what I see about them doesn't make me happy because they are future doctors, attorneys, in other words, experts in any field, you name it. Why should they think that when they start going to university, their attitude towards education may change for better. However, as they say, hope tends to die far, uh, to die last. <laughs> I was about to say to die fast. <laughs> uh, who knows? Okay, you see, um, the end uh, of this writing uh, is slightly different from uh, from this one. In the elementary uh, writing, the end is more positive. Here, it's more extended. Uh, so I use the present perfect tense, have just featured, which means I have just described. The average, uh, the word average is a very good one, and I recommend that you use it more often when writing. Well, you may have noticed, I use the perfect infinitive after the uh, motor verb may, that means um, it happened, but I'm not sure uh, whether it happened or not. That's why we say may, which means maybe, uh, uh, maybe have noticed. Maybe you noticed that, maybe not. Uh, it is a, a high level grammar. So for example, uh, he may come tonight. Yeah, he still can come tonight. Yes, uh, he might uh, have come yesterday but I'm not sure whether he came yesterday or not. In this case, we'll use the perfect infinitive when we refer to the past. Okay, it doesn't make me happy because the future, blah, 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 blah. You name it, it's an idiomatic expression. That means any, you name it, any, any field. Uh, okay, attitudes, uh, two words, a, ve a very nice vocabulary, high vocabulary words, uh, changeful better, uh, this is a, the complete uh, stru vocabulary structure collocation, which you use, should use. However, as they say, hope tends uh, to die fast, to die again fast, to die last. Mm, well, I'm not sure that uh, if there is such a, a, such a sentence in English, it's comprehensible, but frankly speaking, I've got it from another language and uh, some uh, Iranian speaking guys and uh, Ukrainian and Russian speaking guys understand uh, what it means. I hope that others can understand it too. Well, uh, this is the intermediate level, uh, right? Short, uh, short uh, essay writing. Uh, in comparison with the elementary one, first of all, you see, uh, it is much, uh, not much, but considerably uh, larger. Let's see how many words it has. Um, uh, 323, yeah, it's okay. Then uh, also it has much, ext uh, much extension, some extra detail, uh, which makes my writing more interesting and captivating to read. It also, uh, it also contains uh, more advanced structures, uh, possible one construction, ger more gerunds, more infinitives, uh, the complex subject constructions uh, in the form of such uh, collocations that seem to appear to 
Well, the sentence structure is much more complicated because it consists of different clauses uh, connected with each other with the connectors. Uh, uh, well, and uh, again, the lead, uh, there are leading phrases. Uh, any sentence in this writing doesn't start from its own. Uh, it, it starts from a leading phrase or at least a connector. Well, what else? Uh, the use of idioms is okay. I have heard that many students are afraid of using uh, idioms in the IELTS and TOEFL uh, writing. But you should understand one thing. Uh, there are different types of idioms. There are rude idioms and uh, there are uh, idioms uh, of high level. For example, I can't see anything wrong about using, for example, uh, uh, the idiom, you name it, or for example, any other, uh, other which I have included into my writing. Well, it depends. Uh, you shouldn't blindly accept uh, what you have been told. Uh, you should analyze yourselves on the basis of your experience and read more if you don't have a lot of experience uh, related to writing. Well, read a lot, uh, read different uh, uh, different styles, and from reading different styles of writing, you should pick up something which you personally like, and uh, on the basis of what you have collected, you can form, and you should form your own writing style, which will be unique. I will tell you one story which occurred to me. Um, well, it was in two thousand and six maybe or 15 well um i got a group uh, of students i had a group of students and uh, they were ielts preparation uh students there was one guy there in the group who was absolutely lazy i didn't like him really actually i don't like uh, to work and teach uh, lazy guys lazy bones well and uh, we had just started looking into the basics of uh, IELTS writing, okay? So again, I wanna say that uh, it requires different approaches, not the ones we, we are looking into now. Um, they are not uh, more challenging, they are just different, okay? Well, and uh, I showed them, I had shown them uh, a lot of my pieces of work, so they uh, had read through uh, and uh, analyzed my uh, writing style and also they include they picked up some uh, uh, some constructions which I often use uh, uh, in my writing uh, even collocations and it was okay usually my students do that and you know what that guy once brought me his own uh, work it was writing uh, I was writing uh, too when they are supposed to write an essay uh, and you know what? When I was reading uh, his work, I came to realize that it was my work because it was written, I wouldn't say so greatly, but it was written very, very well. And you know, I started to shout at him, you bastard, you have brought me uh, the work which uh, uh, somebody helped you to, uh, somebody helped you to write. Okay, uh, I was shouting him. Uh, yeah, I came down on him very heavily. Uh, but he looked at me with innocent eyes as though he hadn't done anything wrong. And he tried to explain to me that no, he hadn't done anything wrong. He said, Oh, no, Master, uh, you are wrong saying that. You accuse me of uh, turning to somebody else uh, to have it written, but it was me who wrote this work. Really? But you are stupid, you are stupid, you are so bad at writing, uh, I replied. You know, uh, I'm telling you about that now, and I feel sorry for myself and for that guy, of course, too. I am so stupid, really. And you know what? Uh, he came up to me closer saying, hold on a second, George, please calm down, okay? Do you remember you're uh, telling us that we should uh, pick up some structures, constructions, vocabulary units from your uh, words. Remember that? I said, yes, I do. This is what I have done, he said. And only then did I come to realize what he had done. He, he could, you know, it's like a Lego. From uh, the structures which I normally uh, used in my writing, he 
constructed his own. That's why it was uh, like mine. You see, he wasn't that stupid. <laughs> oh, if I'm right, he finally got a good score. Uh, but don't ask me how much. Really, I don't remember. But it was okay. And he was on cloud nine, which means he was quite happy uh, to uh, pass the arts examination with flying colors, which means to pass it successfully. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. I hope that um, uh, my writing and my lesson uh, help you a bit. Okay, maybe not entirely. Uh, it, it shouldn't actually help you entirely because you've got your own uh, teachers, but it can be a good uh, extra lesson for you to improve your writing. Thank you very much. And I hope that my stories, which I sometimes t tell you, uh, so make uh, your watching the video more interesting and easy to do. Thank you very much, guy, guys. And you've got any mm, fr any mm, friends? <laughs> if you've got any questions, you can ask me. Uh, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Bye.